Well, this came by really quickly. It's now time for the recap of the 2021 NAFL season. And in Anthony's Eastern Conference, the St. Juan Islanders made the playoffs for the first time since 2018, and they won their division for the first time ever. And the Toronto Huskies made the playoffs for the first time ever. They actually choked it. They were 12-4. and With two weeks remaining, they could have had first round bye, but they choked it, lost their final two games, and not only did they not get it, they didn't even win the division. They just barely got into the playoffs. What an incredible choke. And Boston actually struggled the entire year pretty much. Finished 11-7, missing the playoffs. First time in f four years. The New York Towers, of course, regressed to 7-11. And the Washington Stars finished 5-13 to no one's surprise. Then in the Century Conference, the um, St. Louis Archers, the defending champs, they started off slow. But then they went on to win every one of their games but one to finish 15-3 and three and got home field advantage. This is the best record in 2021. And the Columbus Cardinals, finally after four years away, are back in the playoffs going 12-6. and six. The Pittsburgh Drillers finished 10-7-1. and seven and one. Oh my god, the Louisville Colonels collapsed to 5-13. and 13. That was an epic collapse. They were like, I think it was like 0-8 at one point. It was really bad. And the Green Bay Cheese, of course, regressing as always. The New York, I mean, New Orleans Jesters not playing good, but somehow won the division at 10 and 8. And the Orlando Galaxy played better, but just couldn't get over the tiebreakers. They went 10 and 8, but wasn't enough. And then Mexico City Aztecs finished 8 and 10. Dallas 7 and 11. Of course, the New Miami Orangemen went 5 and 13. What an epic choke they had. And then we go over to the Western Division as the Los Angeles Wings. Went 13 and 5, and they got first round by, made the playoffs, and won the division all for the first time ever. The Las Vegas Dice just missed out in the playoffs at 11 and 7, and the Phoenix Cactus had a win season, finished in 11 and 7 after having a losing record last year. The San Clara Gold Rush finished 8 and 10, even though they scored more points than they allowed. And oh my God, the Oakland Oats remembered last year they were just 9 and 9, just barely avoid. Having a losing season. Well, they had an epic collapse this year as they finished 2 and 16, the worst record in the league. Just think four years ago, they were the champs. Incredible. And then in my conference, the Philadelphia Americans, who just got into the playoffs on Epic Choke last year, they got first round by for the first time ever, won the division for the first time ever with the league's number one defense as they went 14 4. The Jacksonville Steamboats overachieved as they went 10 and 8. The um, Montreal Saints choked as they went 10-8. and eight. They were strong at the beginning of the year. And the uh, Richmond Panthers, they finally struggled this year. They went 8-10. and 10. Kind of surprising. They just struggled the entire year. And the Buffalo Broncos finished 5-13. and 13. Then the Wichita Thunder, after several years, finally made back into the playoffs and won their division at 13-5. and five. They played really good this year. The Detroit Sparks just missed out. They were playing good. Same goes for the um, Memphis Jets. The Chicago Wolves, remember they won the division last year at 9-9. Well, this time they finished 8-10 and, and out of the playoffs. And the San Antonio Steers continue to struggle at 3-15. Then, here's where it gets crazy in this conference. Remember last year the Birmingham Blaze struggled and finished 9-9. Nine nine. We thought they were going to be done for. But nope. They start off 8-0. Then they collapsed to 9-4. But then they won all the remaining games. To go 14-4 with the league's number one offense and the best offense of all time. Just one point short of the real-life 2013 Broncos for the best offense of all time. A massive point differential, 14-4, home field advantage once again. An incredible season it was. And the Cuban Patriots, after struggling last year, made it back into the playoffs at 12-6. And, and then, oh god, what epic choke job Baltimore had. They start off the year... 5-0, then 6-0-1, oh, and, and looked like they were going to run away with everything. But then they went on to lose all of their games except for the final game of the year. So they went on a 10-game losing streak to wrap up the year. Oh my goodness, that was stunning. And they just barely, too, won their last game. So they could have finished 6-11-1. Yikes, that is unbelievable how Baltimore collapsed after that strong start. And the Atlanta Roses finished four and I mean seven eleven. Then the Tampa Bay Zephyrs. Remember they were two points short of being the champs last year. Well, their defense had an epic shit show. Their offense collapsed as they start off zero and eleven before they finished up four and fourteen. Oh my God! Their quarterback, 
This is incredible. The first half, he was so bad. But then, he became a running quarterback the rest of the season. And in fact, as I'm looking at stats right now, he rushed for almost 1,400 yards, and he had 22 touchdowns rushing. He had just 18 touchdowns passing, so he ran for more touchdowns than he passed for. And despite that terrible passing stats, he somehow got the MVP of the league, which I don't agree with. That incredible rushing yards is great and all, but that was not enough to be MVP. I'm sorry. As Tampa, as you see, collapsed to 4-14. Four what an epic choke that was. As they allowed 626 points. Absolutely incredible. Then in the Western Conference, the Lubach Pilots, I mean Lubach Texans, struggled near the middle part of the year, but they rebounded to go 13-5, started to look a lot better going into the playoffs. And then the San Diego Mariners made the playoffs for the first time ever at 12-6. And, and hey, look at that. The Minnesota Raccoons finished 9-9, First non-losing season since 2018. The Vancouver Storm finished 8-10. And, and the Denver Rollers, what a collapse they had. 13-5 last year, almost made to the conference championship. And they finished 4-14. Four I guess last year was just a fluke, just like Tampa's it seems to be. So anyways, the playoff stands. In Anthony's division, number 1, St. Louis Archers at 13-5. Number 2, Los Angeles Wings at 13-5. Number 3, St. Juan Islanders at 12-6. Number 4, New Orleans Jesters at 10 and 8, number 5, um, Columbus Cardinals at 10 and I mean 12 and 6, and last was the Toronto Huskies at 12 and 6. And then in my conference, it was the Birmingham Blaze at 14 4, number 2, Philadelphia Americans at 12 and I mean 14 4, number 3, Wichita Thunder at 13 5, number 4, Lubach Texans at 4, 13 5, number 5, the Cuban Patriots at 12 and 6, and finally the San Diego Marines, I mean Mariners, at 12 and 6. So then the playoffs happened. Wild card. First up, Toronto at St. Juan. And St. Juan, in their first ever playoff game in Puerto Rico, won at 34-31, a wild fourth quarter. Just held on to get the win over the better t Toronto Huskies. And then the Columbus, Car I mean, yeah, Columbus Cardinals visited the New Orleans Jesters. They shut them out 16-0. And then in my wild card, the San Diego Mariners visited the Wichita Thunder, and they destroyed them. 37 to 20, San Diego did to a surprise. And then the Cuban Patriots visited the Lubach Texans, and Lubach won it in a low score in 14 7 match. So then in the divisional matchups, St. Juan Islanders visited the Los Angeles Wings, as that game went back and forth, but Los Angeles would get the win in the end 33 28 to make it to the conference championship for the first time ever. And then the Columbus Cardinals visited the St. Louis Archers, as that game went back and forth. Matter of fact, um, St. Louis had a 31-17 lead going into the fourth quarter, and Columbus made the comeback to tie it up, forced the game in overtime, and St. Louis would hold on to get 34-31 overtime to make it to the conference championship for the third year in a row. Then, in my divisional round, San Diego visited Philadelphia, and Philadelphia destroyed San Diego 34-10 to make it to the conference championship for the first time ever. And then, the Slubach Texans visited the Birmingham Blaze, as Birmingham dominated the entire game and won it 28 to 19 to make it to the conference championship for the first time since 2018, I believe it was. So then the conference championships, starting off with mine, as the Philadelphia Americans visited the Birmingham Blaze, the battle between the number one offense and defenses in the league. Birmingham would win it 24-7 to become the first team to make it to two championships. They were here in 2017 and in 2021. They're back. And then it was the Los Angeles Wings visiting the St. Louis Archers. Los Angeles had a strong start to the game, but then Los An I mean, St. Louis made the comeback to win it 35-30 as they also be joined Birmingham as another team to make it to two championships. And they are the first team to make it back-to-back -back and the first defending champs to make it back. Incredible. Then it was the championship for 2021. Out in Hawaii, as the Birmingham Blaze face off against the St. Louis Archers. This looked like it was finally going to be the year. 0-4 in the championship, but my Birmingham Blaze were much better. And the St. Louis Archers did not play as well in the playoffs. And statistically, they weren't as good to be a 15-3 I mean team. I thought this was going to be a chance. At first, though, it did not look like it. As going into halftime, St. Louis led 21 to nothing. 
And then midway through the third quarter, they were up 28 to 7. Looked like it was going to be a done for. But the Blaze did not give up. They went on a massive comeback like the Patriots in Super Bowl 51 against the Falcons. And with 19 seconds remaining in the game, and on the final play, Birmingham got a touchdown to make it within two with no time remaining, one try left to go for a two-pointer, and it was successful. And just like that, on the final play of the fourth quarter, Birmingham tied it up at 28. So we are heading to our second overtime game in the championship. Both drives stalled for, for, for both teams, and then St. Louis got down, the, got the ball, marched downfield, and kicked the game-win field goal to win it 31-28. to As Anthony's League is now 5-0 in the championship, sadly, as the St. Louis Archers became the first team in the league to win two titles and the first one to win it back-to-back -back years. First team, two to win two titles, even though I think I brought it up. And, of course, my Birmingham Blaze. Oh, God. First team to lose two titles. They, oh, God. They lost the first one by two. And now here they go losing this one when they were down by 21 points. They made the comeback, and they still couldn't get it. Oh, man, that really sucks. What a blown opportunity it was for Birmingham. Who knows if they're going to be back in the strength last, next year. Because that was a tough loss. But hey, Omedito, the St. Louis Archers, they defied the odds. They did it. Title number two, as they now officially have the lead out for the most titles with two. So, I wonder what 2022 will bring. Will the St. Louis go for the free peat? Or will someone else take over their mantle in Anthony's conference? And will finally next year, will it finally be the year where I finally get my first title win? I guess we're going to have to find out. So see you guys then for 2022.